Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to yet another CentOS video. So in this video, what I'm going to walk you guys through is hosting a website on CentOS. And what I'm also going to do is show you how to check the logs of that site, how to start it, how to stop it, how to edit it. So we're going to actually host a real website on our CentOS installation. So let's go ahead and get started. So back here on the terminal, I'm going to walk you guys through the process, like I mentioned, of hosting a website. So the first command that we're going to run is sudo dnf install httpd, just like that, and then press enter. Put in my password here. Go ahead and install those packages. Awesome. So now we have that package installed. Let's check the status of it. So again, systemctl, just like we've done in a previous video, status, httpd, and then enter. We can see that it is a recognized service, but it's not actually running. So what we'll need to do is go ahead and start it. And I forgot to use sudo, but I'll just type my password in right here, no problem. We can see that now it is running, but it's actually disabled. And I forgot to show you guys how to enable a unit in the systemctl video that I've already done, but that's easily rectified right now because if it's disabled, it's not going to start when the machine starts here. So I'm going to run sudo systemctl enable httpd just like that to ensure that it is actually going to start when the machine starts. So if I go ahead and go down here to another workspace and then bring up a web browser, it doesn't matter which one, but if you're following along with me, you probably have Firefox installed. And then what I'm going to do is just type localhost right up here. And there we go. We've successfully hosted a website on CentOS. It's literally that easy. When you install the Apache HTTP server, which we just did, when we install the httpd package, it gives us a sample page. So if, for example, you are running CentOS on a VPS or some sort of server that is externally available, then you'll be able to enter the IP address of that system into a web browser on one of your machines and you'll be able to hit the default page. So if I go back up here to the terminal, let's go ahead and take a closer look at that. Now again, with journal CTL, we can use dash u, then the unit name, in this case, httpd, and then enter. We get all the logs here for the Apache server, which admittedly doesn't contain too many lines here, but you know, journal CTL, that's what we use to view the logs. If we had any problems, we would go ahead and view any errors in the log right here. But we also have in var log, some additional logging files as well, because not all logging files are going to be in the same place. It's not going to be in journal CTL. That'll handle most of them, but we have an entire folder right here in var log httpd and permission denied. So that's okay. I will do sudo su switch to root. And again, I'm in var log and I will go into the httpd directory. Some of these logs are going to be protected. And if I list the storage here, we have an access log and an error log. So if I cat access log, we can see any attempt that is made to view the website or a hosted resource that is hosted via the Apache HTTPD service. If there are errors, we can of course check out the error log right here, which might give us more information than journal CTL would give us. As you see here, there's some additional information that is pertaining to our Apache service on our system. So now let's go ahead and take a look at another directory. We'll go into Etsy, HTTPD, and then enter. And if we list the storage here, we have some additional directories. If I go into the CONF folder, for example, we have the config file. I'm going to go ahead and print out the contents of that file. 
I'll scroll up a bit. I have quite a bit of lines here. I'm not going to go over all of it right here, but there is an important line that we are looking for, probably closer here to the top. And here it is, the document root. The document root is the directory or the term that refers to the directory that is hosting the files that the service is sharing. In this case, it's var www.html. So let's go ahead and go there then. Inside that folder, we have, well, nothing. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and edit a file and this file won't exist by default, but I went ahead and created this. So I'll open it up in nano. And I created this file, index.html. And of course, this file is lame. It's just habit for me to type HTML tags and caps. Just please ignore that. Basically, it's just a lame, simple HTML file that I put in that directory. And again, this is the directory that I am in. Now, if I go back down to the browser, which is still showing the original start page. Let's refresh this and see what happens. And sure enough, it says Linux is awesome, just like I typed in the HTML file. As you can see right here. So essentially, that's the only file in this directory, and it wasn't even there before I created it which means that the start page that you see when you first install Apache is automatically overridden if you were to go ahead and create an index.html file in the var www.html directory. Another command that I think is important for you to know is systemctl reload httpd, which is different than restart. That's going to simply reload the configuration. It's not going to disconnect users. If you were to, you know, for example, restart the service, it's going to drop users off your site. So basically, if you are going to make changes to Apache, I recommend you try reload first before a restart, especially on a production server where you're hosting a website for an actual user base. You definitely want to be as graceful as you can. And of course, all the other systemctl commands apply to this as well. For example, stop, we can stop the service. And then here I could refresh the page and it's of course going to fail because I stopped the service. And to prove that, I check the status. Everything is of course white, there is no green. And then we can go ahead and start it. It's running. Refresh the page and we're good to go. Now I know that was a very simple example at this point in our series, but you know, I think that this is an important one because now that you know that all you have to do to facilitate hosting a website is install something like Apache, then that means all you need to do is basically change or add a default website to your system by just simply creating an index.html file dumping some WordPress files and installing plugins. Basically, you can use this as your foundation to expand your knowledge. And there's all kinds of cool things that you can host on your server. Now I just mentioned WordPress. There's examples online that you can use to host WordPress. Maybe I'll consider doing a video on that in the future. I did do a video on hosting Nextcloud, which is a great application. And you could go ahead and host that on your server as well. Now that you know how to get started on hosting content on your server, the sky is the limit. So thank you so much for watching this video. Click that like button if you haven't already done so because that lets everybody know that you want to see more Linux content just like this. And hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. And I will see you in the next video.